Okay, so your background is done. Now it is time for us to paint our lavender. You'll need a plate for your paint, obviously. I know, it's a bit obvious. Um, but we're going to get our colours in. So the first thing we want to do is the green part. We've got two different shades of green, which is the light green here. I still didn't take all these lids off between videos. you think I would have, but I didn't. Oh well. So it's a light green, which is sort of a dirty, dusty, olivey green. And then I've got a bluey green. But if you all recall from your teacher training days, how do we make green? With blue and yellow. And you can see here, this one has more blue in it, this one has more yellow. But we also wanted to sort of give you a bit of variety. So what I would suggest is we'll put a little bit of yellow there. And then we want to lighten it up again. So there's always room for a bit of white. Okay, what we want to do now is we're going to do some super, super thin lines. And for that, you go into your brushes and we're going to get the thinnest brush. So it's a number two here. When you do thin lines, I find it's the, it's the only time that um, I'd recommend you water down paint. It actually gets quite translucent if you water it down too much. But because we want to do some nice thin lines, um, we want to water it down. What I also am going to do is just fiddle my canvas around so that it's at a good angle for me to do these lines. Uh, before I start, I want to just show you how to do some lines or give you an idea. Um, whenever I'm doing something with fine detail, I always use my pinky to anchor myself to the canvas. That's why, that way, if I slip, I can only slip in this small area. If I'm sort of drifting around with my hand not on the canvas, I can slip anywhere and make an absolute mess. And we're not going to do that. That's just a little handy hint for you today. So we need to get some grass on there or some, some stems and things. So we're going to go first with the darker green, which would be this one. And you'll notice that I'm going to wet my brush. Well, you didn't notice that, but I just wet my brush. I'm just going to dilute that down just a little bit. And I'm going to start at the bottom here. And I'm just going to do some streaks up there. And you can see that it's already not really green enough. So this is just me going over with the pinky and just doing these nice thin lines and some thick ones. She says, go bloop. Um, so what we're doing is we're doing a sweeping thing. So almost a flick, because that's how we're going to get that nice pointed edge there. Okay. Uh, again, I mentioned the texture earlier when we were doing our backgrounds. You can see that's coming up with that little boxy bits. So that's when we just have to fill it in. And I'm just going to, it, it'll get smaller as it comes down. Think about grass that you've seen too. It's not going to grow all in one direction. So you'll notice that I'm sort of alternating the directions that I flick it in. And because we're going to do a few layers here, um, it won't matter that you've got that wispy thing. You'll also notice that I'm alternating between those two greens. At the moment, I just want to go dark. Um, so in our picture, we've got some lavender strands. Whoops. So we want to start and figure out where they're going to go. So I'm actually going to go and deliberately put in certain ones now that are a little bit more solid that I'm going to use for my stems. Uh, the rule for painting is if you're painting anything with a grouping of less than 10, you should make it an odd number. And apparently it's the way our brains work and they want us to, um, if, if it's an even number, your brain will actually automatically divide it in half and it'll sort of split the canvas or your painting into two pieces and you don't want that. So we want to do odd numbers. Now, because we're doing a mass of lavender, I don't think it's going to matter so much because we'll have, you know, all kinds of different flowers and things in there. And as I'm going, I'm just layering it in until I fill in that bottom part. So I'm going to get all of this part down here will almost be a solid green by the end. Okay, so I'm just flicking. So I've got uh, I've got a couple of stems here for lavender. I want to have three big ones coming up. And again, they're going to go quite high on your canvas because otherwise you're going to end up with a lot of, you know, dead space. So I'll get my third one. I'm going to bring that up this way by going like that with the pinky anchored. And that'll be where my big third lavender goes. And the rest of this, we'll have, we'll have lots of little lavenders down in the bottom here and then we'll have sort of a lighter colour over the top. But at the moment we want to just make sure that we've got a special space for our lavender. You'll also notice that my canvas has now become upside down. And that's because I find it easier sometimes to flick this way. Flick it towards yourself. So you'll work out which way is more comfortable for you and you'll, you know, figure it out that way. So I'm just flicking it that way. 
and then as I come down here my my little bits of lavender or my little bits of grass are going to be shorter and shorter until it fades out into nothing I quite like it with this orange this is looking really good okay so that's our first layer of uh, organic matter I guess of grass and things what we're going to do now is go back to our plate and get some of this yellow and mix it in with the green it's going to give us a nice delicious limey green and then we're going to get some of this white and mix it in with the viridian although it's almost a tealy turquoisey thing so we're still using the same sort of colors we're just going to lighten them up again now okay so again we're going to lighten or, or layer up with our different coloured bits of grass. So we've got a dark background and that's going to give it some depth. And then we've got this nice light bit going over the top with our two altered colours. I tell you, I just babble a lot with these videos. You're lucky your teachers because when I do this for children, I make up a kid's voice. I call them Gordon and I talk all the way through it. So be thankful that I am not babbling away in a baby kid's voice. <laughs> the things we do, right? All right. So I've almost got enough grass and leaves and bits and pieces here. Just make sure that you always end, end these bits with a point at the top because otherwise it looks weird. Oh, well, I guess it would look like your lawn had just been mowed maybe. Okay, I'm just making sure that I've got it all filled in at the bottom here. Because that gives us our, our more depth and it looks like you've got a really thick, luscious garden there. I'm just going to bring a few more of these up just to, just to sort of fill in that green a little bit. Get rid of a little bit more of that background. This is actually an easy, easy enough class to do with your children as well. Maybe not the kindies. Oh, why not? Go nuts. Okay, and now I just want to go and thicken up, or not thicken up, but darken up a couple of these that have sort of disappeared on me. And the ones that have disappeared on you basically just turn into fading into the background. Okay, so I'm just going to darken up a few of these little end pieces. So that it looks more like a tree, or more like grass, anyway. Okay. So this is what we need to do for our bits of grass and things. Happy? We're happy. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we need to do for the grass. Um, ideally, I'd want this to dry just because the purple is going to, or the purple and pink that we use will may, maybe... Um, blend in a bit with the green but I'll talk a little bit wash your brush and let's get our next colors ready so we want to use purples and greens if you have a look in your paint set you'll see that we have uh, oh sorry purples and pinks you'll see that we have zero purples and zero pinks so let's make some the crimson crimson is red with a tiny bit of blue in it purple is red with a lot of blue in it so we're going to start off with our crimson color and Ultramarine, you've got two blues. Phthalo blue is probably the purest blue. It's a nice dark one. Ultramarine blue has a little bit of red in it. If you add more red, it turns purple. So let us get these two colours out. The nice thing about having to mix the colours yourself is that we're going to get lots of lovely shades, lots of lovely tones of the same colours, but it's going to add depth to our picture. And then we'll probably need, you know, a little bit of white too. So while we're waiting for our green to dry, we can start mixing up some colors. So I'm gonna put a little bit of white here and here. And in this one, I'm gonna add a little bit of, or quite a bit of blue and a little bit of blue there. And in the other one, I'll add quite a bit of red and a little bit of red. And so we'll mix those up and see what we get. That's super blue. And this one's gonna be super pink. Or red anyway. I want that to be much lighter. So let's make up a, a nice light pink as well. Or pinkish, pinky purpley. 
okay and then we can get another blob of the blue and a blob of the red and make just a nice dark purple which is probably going to be too purple and look a bit muddy but we do need uh, low light highlights and low lights okay so let me just mix these up a bit I'll put a bit more red a bit more blue in that one and a bit more red in that one there we go we got some nice sort of well lavendery colors which is what we wanted so now if you have a look I've got actually five different colors plus white to use for our, our lavender again we're going to work from the back to the front so we're going to get our dark colors and we're just going to start putting them on the tips and all I'm doing if you can see is just little waves up like that okay that's all we're going to do for the lavender so use your dark darkest paint that you've made up and we'll put a few of these in not an, oh you can do them on the big stems so we're just going to start these these are going to be mostly background I guess so we're just going to start putting in some of this dark dark purple and I'll put a few up here as well lavender is super easy it's one of the easiest flowers to do it's just little stripes out like that and we've all seen it which makes it much much easier to deal with as opposed to me pulling out some very rare flower that nobody's ever heard of okay look at that we've got beautiful beautiful lavender started uh, I'll just put a couple more in so those are my dark ones now I'm going to I'm not washing my brush between these either because uh, pointless oh uh, here's another handy hint I've actually put a little bit of green on there accidentally while it's still a bit damp if you make a mistake like this this is acrylic paint it is a little bit forgivable so I've got a paper towel I've just wet it a little bit and I'm just very lightly while the green is still a bit damp I'm going to go over that and I can take that paint off so if you do make a mistake if you accidentally do that and if you look at my hands I've already covered in paint if you make a mark you can wipe it off with a wet piece of paper towel I'm not sure why I'm painting this upside down let's turn it around the right way again okay we've got our dark ones now I'm going to get my lighter pieces and I'm going to do the same sort of thing on some different stems mm, let's go over here A lot of my classes I don't actually brush wash the brush between paint either because I really like having that beautiful blend of different colors that's just going to be grass let's just leave that at grass and I'm going to put a few down here just in among our grasses too because you know big lavender little lavender while I'm doing this I'm actually going to start putting a few of these lighter bits over the top of the purple one of the things I haven't talked to you about yet is light source which is what we're going to have to figure out when we do our next layer of purple because uh, again that's gonna by, by establishing a light source we're gonna give this more three-dimensionality and make it look just a little bit more realistic okay so I'm just going over these super dark ones now with the the bluey purple and you can see how long it's taking me it's taking forever it's not really okay so last one's there and then I can start doing the ready one and this is just giving us a nice little bit of variety um, of colors and things and that's what you want uh, one more thing. and then anywhere that you've only got the one color so we did those light blue ones up here so we can put a bit of the lighter color on there see how nice it is when you start adding the extra colors to it that pink or the dirty pink sort of thing okay and then we might get that white up here you can still see that and now we're going to make a super light purple very very pale and I'm actually mixing the red and the blue there so now I've got this really really light pastel color this is where we're establishing our light source which for me it's going to come from here because obviously that's our lightest part of the canvas so with this light light color 
Think about the light shining down here. So everything that hits is going to be high lit. Highlighted? Highlight. Yeah, that'll work. High lit. I've just made up a word in front of teachers. I'm not embarrassed at all. So now I'm just going to use the very tip of my brush because I want to make these lovely and thin. But see how I'm also just going to put this light part mostly on the right hand side of my flowers because that's where our light source is. And it's going to give us that three dimensionality. So mostly on the left hand side, you will put a little bit on the right, on, sorry, mostly on the right hand side and you will put a little bit on the left um, just to balance it, I guess. Look at that, look how pretty this is. You can also, when we've done this, you can add one more layer if you were feeling like it, which is just a little bit of white and I'll show you what we're gonna do. And that just, again, highlights it. I'm all about layers. You wanna get some depth in your artwork. The more layers you do, the more effective it's gonna look. Okay, so I've got light on one side. And then if you wanted to just even highlight it further, we can get a little bit of pure white. So I'll just wash my brush properly, dry it off, and then just getting a little bit of pure white. And you can just add a little bit just to the top parts there. Because again, that's where our light's gonna hit. We're nearly done the lavender, guys. See how just, just a little bit of white is going to make everything perfect. Right, 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 right. And it's just, just up on the top tops there because that's where the sunlight's going to hit. And there'll be fewer bits of white down the bottom because sunlight, right? There we go. There's our lavender looking beautiful. Um, if we look at the original one, because I did the background so dark, I then put these light bits over the top and I think they're a bit ugly. You can choose to do that if you want to, which is just getting your green again. So I'd be using this green, um, just a tiny bit of it, add it to the white, make it super light. And what we can do, if you're feeling brave, is just take it down the sides that are going to hit the sun. Who's feeling brave? Who's going to do this bit? Come on, be brave. If you've been to my art class, you all have to do this bit and I'll check to make sure that you have. So that's just a little bit of a highlight there. Um, you can actually do it on a few more of these pieces of grass too. Just try to run it down, obviously the right hand side because that's where our light source is. And just by adding, again, that little bit of light there, we're just giving it a bit more depth, a bit more, a bit more interesting bits. Oh wow, my words are hard. This is what happens when you don't get to teach for months. Your mouth gets twisted and you can't say words. So there is our lavender. All we have left to do now are the two butterflies. We've got two butterflies here. They're gonna be really, really simple because we wanna keep it easy. Um, just to cheat. <laughs> Here's some I did earlier on the back. Um, I might do this in paint. If you're not feeling comfortable or confident doing this in paint, get yourself a lead pencil. You want it to be blunt. Um, this isn't too bad because it is a, a hard canvas, but if you were ever doing this on a stretch canvas, you would the pencil could go through it so easily. So we want to go fairly lightly with your pencil to do a butterfly. So a butterfly, we have a body, and then we have basically a big triangle and a little triangle, and that's it. Um, I tend to soften it up a bit so you can make them with those long, you know, we've all seen butterflies. So you can soften it up and curve the edges and things like that uh, to make it your own. And then our other butterfly, which is going to be on one of our flowers. Again, you've got the body and it's just going to be one triangle this time and another. So he's on his side. And there are our two butterflies. What colour should we do them? Any colour you want, except obviously I'm not going to do orange. 
Um, I did white on the other ones just because the canvas was so dark. White's not going to work on here. Also pay attention to now I've put the pencil on there. Um, you're going to have to make sure that you cover that. So I think my butterfly, I might do a blue butterfly. Yes, let's do a blue butterfly. I got my blue and my white. So again, we're just going to use this super thin brush. I find it's easier if you outline things first and then color them in. And again, you'll see I've got my pinky anchored there just so that I don't make a massive mistake, which I have done before. Okay, so here's my butterfly. I can fill him in now. If I want, I'll make it a bit lighter there. Maybe it's a moth because it's not overly pretty. I don't know. But while your paint's wet too, you can add some other colours. You can add the white there just to lighten it up a bit. Um, yeah, just play with it. Have some fun. I My butterflies have been just plain solid colours because letting it dry and everything else. If you wanted to afterwards, you can just get um, textures or a paint pen and you can add some more detail. You can add some circles and spots and, you know, you know what a butterfly looks like. So I'm just filling all this in now. I'm going to make this a bit darker at the bottom because that top wing sits on top of the bottom wing. So we want to make that a little bit darker just there to indicate a shadow. I probably should have painted that bottom part first. But you're all following me, so now you've all done it wrong too. It's not wrong, it's just backwards. And the reason I'd say do it first is because you can see that that line just there. So if I go over this bit here, there we go. And now that top wing sitting over the top, which is how we want it. Okay. Um, and then the body, which is just really a line with a curly bit at the top there. If you want to get into fancy, we can try to put some antenna and stuff on there. But anyway, that's our butterfly. If you wanted to, you can add some details later on. You'll see the details won't really stand out too much now because everything's wet. But there's our butterfly. Bloop. And we just do the same with the other one down here. Let's do the bottom bit first this time. Again, we want to go slightly darker there on the bottom and then we'll lighten it up a bit for the top which is just not washing my brush just adding a bit of white to it because I've already got the blue on there and we just put that little butterfly wing right there over the top and lighten up that bottom bit while it's still wet and just blend it in and then we get your body there okay and again if you wanted to put some details on we can do that but I kind of like the moths just or the moths the butterflies just a little bit sort of plain so there it is there is our butterflies on lavender painting and you didn't think you could paint breathe you've got the video you've watched the video you've done the class it's going to be beautiful i have every faith in you congratulations you've just done a painting talk to you later bye